All right, welcome everybody to a brand new semester. If this is your first time having a class with me, then you should know that all of the homework in the class, at least all of the programming assignments in this class, must be done on a server that I have set up that uh, I've actually configured all myself. I pay for it myself, set up for you guys, uh, and I've made accounts for all of you guys on the server. You must use it uh, this semester, especially since with the advent of ChatGPT and things like that, uh, it has, it, unfortunately, it has like anti-cheating measures built into it, so it'll detect if you copy and paste code and, and so on and so forth. Uh, but it's got a lot of really nice features too, and so I'm kind of excited to show you how to log in for the first time, how to get set up, how to get going on our server. So if you're on Windows, you need to download and install a program called Putty, <clears throat> P-U-T-T-Y. And if you are on a Macintosh, you must use iTerm2. And if you are on a Linux server, then you know what you're doing and you don't need to watch this video, except maybe uh, this part where you get your username and password coming up right now. So what you're going to do is inside of Putty or iTerm2, you're going to connect to the host uh, www.csi4x.com. You can see it at the bottom part of the screen on here. Uh, and in fact, even if you don't type in the www part, if you just type in csi4x.com, It'll work just fine. Uh, the default port's 22. And when you connect, it is going to ask you for a username and a password. Now, your username is composed of your last name, an underscore, and your student ID. So my last name is Kearney. <clears throat> so my username would be Kearney underscore my student ID. My student ID just so happens to be 0123456. And then it's gonna ask me for my password. And my password is in fact the same as my username to begin with. So if your last name is Jones and your student ID is 13579, then you type in Jones underscore 13579 as both your username and your password. So I'm gonna type in again, Kearney underscore 0123456. Notice that none of the characters appear on the screen here. This is something that confuses people a lot of times. It's a security measure so that people don't know how many letters are in your password if they're looking over your shoulder. I hit return. And when you log in, it is going to give you a message that you have to change your password immediately because that is not a secure password as you can imagine. Anybody who, who can see you logged on the server would know what your password is because your username is your password. So uh, you have to start off, uh, the very first thing you do on the server is you're gonna have to change your password. And there's three steps to this. And people always get it wrong, so just pay attention. The first step is you type in your current password. So you first type in Kearney 0123056 again. If I can type that in while typing and talking at the same time. Maybe I did, maybe I didn't, I don't know. And then you type in, so step one, you type in your current password, which is your username, Jones13579. Now you type in a new password and make it a good password. I run a password cracker, a password breaking uh, algorithm on every student's password on the server. I do this to find weak passwords because people can and have had their accounts compromised by four by before by people on the internet. And so type in a good password. Okay. Don't type in like love me or like password with a zero for the O or something horribly uh, obvious like that. Come up with a decent enough uh, password. So I'm going to type in a highly sophisticated password here. Kearney underscore one, two, three, four, five, six. And then again, I'm going to type in Kearney underscore one, two, three, four, five, six. And then it logs me off. I must have done it wrong. Mm, that's normal. So when you log in for the first time, it's like, hey, your password has to change. You go through the password change process, current password, new password, new password steps. Current password, new password, new password. Then it logs you off. Okay. Then when you are ready to log in for realsies, uh, then you're going to come back in and go through that again, csi4x.com. And then uh, the font's smaller this time. Let me make the font bigger. One second. I'm going to make it nice and big and bolded. There we go. So my login is Kearney underscore six and my password is Kearney underscore one, two, three, four, five, six. 
and it worked. So now I am on the server. Okay. And uh, it's required uh, whenever you log in to um, a Unix server like this, a text based thing, since it looks like you're hacking the Pentagon, you have to announce the world I'm in. Or I'm in the mainframe, one or the other. And then you can like run C matrix and have, you know, look like you've just <clears throat> joined the matrix or, or something like that. Okay. So uh, now that you are on the server, you need to know that there are five uh, commands in Unix that you're going to need to know how to do. Uh, there's currently nothing on, on my account right now. So let me just make some fake things up. Let me just make a directory called like simple or something like that. And uh, we'll pretend that was there all along. When, when you use the server, I push out homework to you guys. So what happens is the first command ls, that's an L, not a one, ls. You hit return and it shows you all the files and folders. Let me make a couple other fake files in here. I have a to-do list and uh, uh, shopping dot text and things like that. So when you type ls, <clears throat> it shows you all of the files and folders in your current working directory. When you log in, you're in your home directory, which is uh, known as tilde. That is the uh, tilde, like a lot of people, I don't, know, I don't know, maybe they didn't take Spanish or something, I don't know. But it's like over the inye, you know. um, but it's the key to the left of the one on your keyboard, uh, also known as the cheat uh, code character. When you like play video games, that brings up the cheat console in Skyrim and things like that. So the tilde in Unix means that's your home directory. And so the first command you need to know is ls. ls will show list. It'll show you all the files and folders that are in your current directory. The second command you need to know is cd. CD stands for change directory. So if you type CD and then the name of a folder, you can see here we have a folder called simple calculator. Uh, you do that and then you can see my current working directory is now simple calculator. I could go back up to my home directory by typing CD dot dot. Dot dot means go up a level. It's like when you double click a folder in Windows then you go back up a level by clicking on the breadcrumbs up top. Like uh, here I've got my uh, uh, Hogwarts legacy uh, folder here and I CD into it. And then if I wanna go back up, I click up. That's like CD up up when I go up a level there, okay? So uh, another way you can go back up is by just typing CD by itself. If you type CD with nothing, it takes you back to your home directory. You can see here within the square brackets here, it is showing you your current directory. Uh, you also notice that I typed simple calculator really fast. This is not essential. It's not like mandatory. It's not something you have to do, but you will thank me for, for this. Uh, trust me. And, and if a TA ever comes by and he sees you like trying to type like simple no, 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 you forgot to tap, you forgot to hype underscore. Like the, the TA is going to go crazy from impatience. There is a way of typing in all of that very quickly. You just type the first couple letters and then hit tab. And when you hit tab, it fills in the rest of it for you. It does auto completion. And so <clears throat> once again, I typed CD simp and then hit tab and it filled in the rest of the name for me. Uh, in, in fact, I, I, this would have worked with just S because I only have one folder right now. So it'll fill in uh, everything that it can. And so this is a way of very quickly typing file names and folder names and things like that inside of Linux. Okay, let me make a couple fake files inside of here real fast. Uh, there we go. So now that I'm inside of the simple calculator directory, I can type ls and you can see there's a couple of files in there that I just made. Uh, one has the, uh, the program that I'm gonna be working on for this assignment and one that has the uh, instructions for the assignment. So if we want to open a file to read it or to edit it, the command to do so is called vi, okay? You might also see me type vim sometimes. You might also see me type in Vim sometimes, um, what, is, what is open application? Why are you, why are you here? Why are you here? Why are you here? 
I don't know what that's doing. Anyway, uh, but for the the all of them do the same thing. It is a text editor. Okay, it is the world's best text editor. Don't let the haters tell you otherwise. They're just afraid of the power of them. Okay, so if I vim main.cc, I am now inside of a. Uh, if anyone's into melodic death metal, we got we got some of that ready. Okay. And the first time you run Vim, it's actually going to install a lot of software. Okay, you're going to see this weird this weird thing here. You will only see this the first time you run Vim. Okay, and it'll say like hit enter to continue, and then you can see on the bottom there it's like installing some software. Basically, the alumni and I and experienced students and I uh, we spent uh, quite a bit of time over the summer working on uh, setting up a new development environment for you guys that will have lots of plugins and uh, like a step, like there's a cool little status bar at the bottom here. It's got the day, it's got the time. Um, it's got a lot of stuff for you guys. And just let it run for a little while. You'll see at the bottom here, it's like compiling this, installing that. Just let it, just let it do its thing. That will only appear the first time you run uh, Vim, okay? And then after, it looks like it's all, it's all good. So I'm gonna hit Q, close that screen. And now I am inside of my text editor and you're not going to see that screen ever again, probably. And it's got a lot of cool stuff. Like if you have a bug in your code, uh, for example, if I uh, do, a little, uh, do a little this and that, you can see it's like offering suggestions to me. Here's like the world's simplest C++ program, but I misspelled return. Deliberately so, in fact. And so you can see that uh, it has caught the mistake that I intentionally made. And uh, it is saying, use of undeclared identifier, re uh, should I have spelled that return instead? I should have. And then you can see the error goes away. Um, you can see it's got these like lines uh, right here, kind of like showing you which uh, curly braces match each other. It's got a lot of really nice features. It's got the status bar down here. If I make mistakes, like if I type in Ryu, turn, nah, whatever, a few times, you'll see at the bottom here, it it uh, it says there are four errors currently in your code. Um, sometimes you'll get what's called a warning, which isn't like a deadly error, but you should probably fix it. Um, so you can see down here, I've got three errors and uh, one warning. So we, we actually spent quite a bit of time like setting up a pretty cool development environment for you guys to do lots of things. And so you guys are going to have a huge advantage over students in the past um, because uh, uh, they did not have um, all of this cool stuff installed for them. Like when they, if they wanted to find out if their code was correct or not, they actually had to like try compiling it, which I'm going to show you in a second, and then going back in and fixing it. And with this, it'll just show you immediately you made a mistake. So you guys are our guinea pigs. You are the first uh, group of students uh, to, uh, to experience this, unless you're watching this video in the future, in which case maybe you're a subsequent group and everything worked fine. So either way, be, be appreciative of the work of all of the students uh, that went before you that worked on putting this great development environment together for you. So, I'm going to write a really simple uh, C++ program. Hello world is the mandatory um, first program that every person writes. Uh, when you uh, when you do this on your own, just try typing this um, from scratch. There's an even simpler way that I've made for you. Where you just do a print line. Hello world like this. Even less typing. And uh, the return zero you'll see in a lot of places, not actually necessary. So this is kind of like uh, this is kind of like a pretty pretty simple first program. What is it going to do when you run it? It's going to print to the screen the words "Hello World," and this is uh, something that every computer science major. It's a long-standing tradition where we all write this as our first program. <clears throat> and every time I learn a new programming language, the first thing I do in a new programming language is to write "Hello World." as well, uh, when the uh, Vegas I uh, just opened up this billion dollar sports arena or concert arena or something. In Vegas, uh, a month ago, the first thing they, they printed, because it has thousands of LEDs on the outside of it, 
it's amazing. Uh, they printed Hello World on the uh, on the outside of the eye, which is pretty neat too. So, uh, so what you do, if you want to use the eye, is uh, you when you start off, if you try typing things, you'll notice like letters aren't appearing on the screen. It's not like a normal text editor. It is, uh, it is in fact um, a weird text editor, but amazing. Like I said, it is the best text editor in the world. Uh, it just takes a little bit of time to get used to it. So what you do is you type vi or vim or invim, all three of them do the same thing on the server, and the name of the text file you wanna edit. Then once it opens up, notice that it, it did not do the installation process again. Uh, if you want it to now, if you wanna type something, which is like, but of course I wanna type something, it's a text editor, right? Uh, you type I, I is for insert, and you'll notice on the bottom left corner of the screen here, it moved from normal mode into insert mode. And now whatever I type on the screen, I don't even know what just happened there, uh, <laughs> uh, just uh, exploded. Uh, I typed too fast, I don't know. Uh, if I type I, now I, I'm not going to insert mode anymore. It's actually having the words, uh, the letters I appear on the screen. So again, when you start off in Vim, you are in what's called normal mode or command mode. And in order to start actually typing things, uh, you have to hit I, and now you can actually type things like uh, a normal human expects text editors to type. It's like being in Microsoft Word at this point. You just type anything you want. And you'll see that it's offering suggestions and stuff like that to you. That's all these new plugins and, and so on and so forth that we installed for you over the summer. Um, so you can go ahead and just type this little bit, these four lines right here. Hashtag include basic, int main, open close parentheses, open curly brace, print line, double quote, hello world, double quote within parentheses, of course, semicolon, and close curly boy. You type this, then and you're done typing, you're in insert mode. To go back into normal mode, you type escape. Okay. And when you hit escape, you're back in command line. And you're like, well, what does command line do? Well, the most important thing you can do is save and quit, right? And the command to save and quit is shift ZZ, okay? And if you're like, how am I gonna remember all these things? There's an announcement on Canvas that has all of these steps on it. So if you go into the CSI 40, or uh, whatever class you're in, announcement section, you will see that there is a Unix cheat sheet that shows you all these things. Here's how you log in. Here's how you show files and folders. Here's how you change directories. Here's how you edit a source code. The next thing we're gonna do is compile it, okay? Compiling it means we're gonna turn it from a text file into an executable, into something we can actually run. This is the primary activity that we do as, as computer science majors. So I'm gonna type compile, um, if I can type it, compile main.cc. And if everything works correctly, enter my email. All right, the first time you do this now, you actually have to enter your email address. So my email address is attorney at scud.edu and my username is wkerney. Uh, and it looks like Aaron has an error in his thing. We'll fix that in post, don't worry. Um, Let me pause one second. So that was uh, one of the things we were working on for the summer project. Uh, we will uh, have the catch by the time class starts. Uh, anyhow, this is what it's gonna do. So you hit compile main.cc and this is what it's supposed to look like. So it uh, does a couple checks on your code to make sure that everything looks good. Then it compiles your code. And if you type ls now, you will see there is now an executable inside of your uh, directory called a.app. An executable is something you can run, like a, uh, an app on your, your cell phone or a .exe on your Windows machine. Uh, we run a.out here by typing a.out and hit return. And it prints, hello world. Good job. If you want to not have to type five whole characters, uh, in Unix, we care a lot about speed and efficiency. Uh, there's actually an alias called A that just runs a dot out for you. So if you want to run a dot out, hit A, return, and there's your stuff. So look, let's say we want to change this code to, uh, instead of saying, hello world, hello world, we say goodbye, goodbye world. 
Everybody always says hello to it. They never wish it goodbye. How about good night, moon? That's a little bit less depressing. Okay, so let me show you how to how this development process works in this in this class. So you've got some source code. You're writing a program. Don't worry about the actual program. I'm just kind of showing you the the steps that you take. And so again, you type in vim or bi or nvim. All three of these commands do the exact same thing. You'll see me probably use all three interchangeably. And the name of the file that you're editing. And we're back inside of here. We are in normal mode like this. And uh, I'm going to change hello world to good night moon. OK? And uh, you might, you're like, wait, he just, he did that really quickly. Um, yeah, because Vim is amazing. Uh, if you wanted to do it with what you know right now, you would have to do it the slow way, which is to hit I to go into insert mode. Now it's like a normal word processor and hit a bunch of keys, really slow, tedious, time consuming. And, and believe it or not, probably, probably half of the programmers in the world who are afraid of them, they actually will hit delete that many times. And I'm just like, why would you do that? You know, why would you hit 20 keys when you can do it in a couple keystrokes? So what I did, and you don't have to remember this, I'm just kind of doing this to show you the power of them. I typed uh, D to W. And so you can see it's actually popping a little cheat sheet here. W means next word. So I said, delete the next two words. And there you go, D to W. And boom, if I want to delete three lines, D3D, right? Um, if I want to delete uh, 10 characters, I can type 10x. Uh, there's uh, a huge number of commands in Vim. Nobody knows them all. Uh, everyone has, every Vim master has their own workflow. And so it's a lot of fun hanging out with other Vim people because they know commands you don't know. Uh, but the upshot is that you're able to do things like, um, like, you know, there, there are actual programmers out there that, like, if they had to do, uh, I don't know, what is the good night moon? It's in, oh, I found it. Texture. I actually don't remember it. Uh, I want to see the actual the inside of the book. Hang on. No. Uh, uh, good night stars, good night air, good night noises everywhere. Okay, cool. All right, so good night moon. Good night gloom. Good night air. I know that's not what it what it said. Good night air. Good night noises everywhere. Now there are programmers that actually like type. Right, right. Open parentheses, double quote, dun, 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 close quote, close parentheses, semi. Like all that, there's a lot of repeated stuff here. You know what I mean? Like the print line is repeated, the parentheses is repeated, the double quotes repeated. And I, I don't know. I, I don't get these people. It's like I, I have better things to do than um, wasting my time in life. And so uh, in Vim, you can just do something like YY, which copies a line. And again, you don't have to memorize all this. I'm just kind of showing you the power of Vim right now. Y, Y, and then I can do like 5P, and it pastes it five times. Neat. All right. And then I can go over here and DW, delete a word, good night, noon, good night, loom, good night, loom. You know what I mean? Like, you can, you can just sit there and just have mega brain expanded consciousness power when you're, when you're coding. It's really nice. You don't have to know any of that right now. So if you're feeling like, ah, oh, it's too much, like all you need to know is I puts you into insert mode. So you can see at the bottom part of the screen here, and now you can type things. When you're done, escape puts you back in normal mode and shift ZZ saves and quits. Then you want to test the code again and see if it worked. Compile your code, run it. And you'd see that the program is now saying good night moon, good night gloom, good night noon, good night loom, good night flume, good night air, good night noggises everywhere. And there you go. That's these are the only five commands you really need to know for the entire semester. So if you're if you're happy with that, you know more power to you. Um, I recommend going through a Unix tutorial 
learning more Unix commands and just LS and CD and things like that. Uh, learning Vim and, and learning Vim isn't something you do in an hour. It is a uh, lifetime of sort of building up knowledge of Vim over time, over the years. Um, but I highly recommend it. It'll make you bigger and stronger and more physically fit. Um, it'll make your life better in every possible way. Uh, there is one last thing when we get to the, uh, the, the homeworks, the officially graded homeworks. But there is one last command you might want to know, and that's called input tester. Notice how I didn't type the whole thing in, because if you're a Unix wizard, you you just hit, hit tab. It fills the thing in for you. Like you you trust me, you will annoy your TA if you're just sitting there like you know, just hit tab, hit tab, tab, hit tab, 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 tab. <laughs> like even if you're there, he'll be like, tab. There you go. So input tester will uh, run your program and it will see if the output of your program matches the expected output of the program. And it's a way of telling like how many points I'm gonna get on the homework. You will know in advance pretty accurately what your score will be on a homework at all times. Uh, if there are 10 test cases, if there are 10 things that it tries on your program and you pass eight of them, you're gonna get an eight out of 10 on the homework. You will always know what your score is gonna be on most homework assignments. Now, some homework assignments are like, you know, writing a report or, you know, making a open-ended, you know, Photoshop filter or something like that. So a, a few of the things like don't work like this, but most of them you'll just run input tester and then input tester will look like this. And so what it's showing you there is that I am actually not passing the simple calculator assignment uh, because believe it or not, what I wrote here with good night moon is not in fact a math calculator. So I'm going to fail all of the test cases. But what it's showing you here, it's on the left hand side, it's showing like what my program is putting out, good night moon, good night gloom, bum, 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 bum. And on the right hand side, let me get my face out of the way, it's showing you what the uh, assignment is expecting. Do you want to do addition, subtraction, et cetera, et cetera. So I failed that test case. And if I keep hitting space, it'll run through the other test cases. I'm going to fail all those too. Like I'm, I'm, I'm getting zero out of 10 right now. Um, and at a certain point, you just be like, okay, stop beating me up. You can hit Q and then it dumps out of the input tester. So uh, basically, kind of as you're developing your, your homework uh, solutions, um, yeah, you just be like, eh, I'm curious. So what, what's my score right now? You know, and you and uh, let me show what it'll look like if you get it all right. Uh, let's see. You want to see a lot? You want to see how many homework assignments I've made over the years? It's a lot. Yeah, maybe it's not a minute. So I'll type the word count by line. 556 homework assignments, give or take. I didn't make all of them. Um, and some of them are like references, but eh, 500-ish, you know. You're, you guys are getting all new homeworks for this semester as well because uh, there are uh, answers for all my old homeworks on GitHub. And so again, we're really focusing on uh, clamping down on cheating, unfortunately. And so in order to, you know, for there not to be just an easy, like, oh, just Google, you know, the answer to simple calculator uh, on GitHub. Um, we're making all new homework assignments. So, but let me just show you what it looked like if you uh, were to get all the things right in the input tester. So I am in my own directory. So hopefully I will get these all right. And I'm gonna run input tester. And then you can see here, test pass, test pass, test pass, boom, 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 boom. I got 11 points out of 10. You know, wait, 11 points? Yeah, I got the extra credit. So on the homework assignment, I would get a 110%. Go me. And so a lot of times on my homeworks, I will put in an extra test case that's harder than the other ones. And if you want to kind of stretch yourself and earn some points, um, go for it. If you want to not, then no. It's up to you. Like you, you, you know, it's your choice. So, but yeah, I offer a lot of extra credit in this class and uh, uh, not every homework assignment has extra credit on it, but we do workshops and things like that. Through the semester also, uh, we give talks on all sorts of topics and um, they uh, are all worth extra credit usually. So that is the introduction to the server. The uh, uh, announcements, like I said, have, um, Right here, everything I just talked about, how to log in. You're gonna log in with your last name, underscore student ID. 
um, keep the leading zero. Uh, in, in some semesters in the past, I didn't, I didn't have a zero in the username. Uh, this semester I do. Um, so just make sure if you have a leading zero, the leading zero is in there. And then these are the, the that's it. That's all you need to know in order to use the, the server for the semester. I don't expect you to know any you know, computer science or anything like that yet, but it's a really good idea if you guys just go ahead, log on, you know, goof around with some things and uh, just get comfortable with it prior to uh, doing anything else because it'll make your it'll make your life a lot better. The more Unix you know, the better off your life will be, I guarantee it. Okay, so thank you all for uh, listening to this uh, talk and uh, I will see you on the flip side. Peace.